Dave Rubin went on Joe Rogan's podcast and um, they went back and forth on the issue of regulation. This is interesting. Let's watch. And then I have a bunch of stuff I want to say. What problem would you – everything you're building here right now, right? Do you want the government to tell you how to do all these things and all the regulations that you got to have your electric thing this far from this and like all well, the, the regulations like that for construction are important though. You do have to make sure that people don't do stupid shit. But make but sure generally, you don't have a power line near a water line. You, you, there's a lot of. But I would put most of that on the builders though. They want to build things that are good. Now I get it. Oh, I get, that's not true. Listen, people. No, cut, no, people are going to build corners all the time. Like you have to have regulations when it comes to construction methods, they, or people are going to get fucked. They cut regulate. They cut corners when there are regulations anyway they do they would cut a lot more if there weren't regulations i'm not totally you go to third world countries and look at construction methods they're fucking dangerous yeah that's why schools collapse on kids in foreign countries sometimes like well you, i'm not complete i'm not telling you that i'm against all regulation period that's okay. where but that's where i said intellectually i like that argument because you could make it i think you can make a very sound argument that competition would force people to do better work. Like if you're a plumber, you have a vested interest in doing the best plumbing job you can so that people will rate you on Yelp so that you will get more work. You don't have a vested interest in cutting corners. Now you might, right? You're gonna push it as much as you can to save as much time and energy and money as you can. Mm -hmm. But once you go over that edge, yeah, you don't wanna be known as the guy that the you tightened something too much so that you flooded the house or when you're building a house. You're thinking that, that, logically though. When when people fuck things up and short things and do things terrible, they're not thinking logically. But they're I don't think it's the government. Heads. I don't think it's the government that they're like, ah, the government gave me this regulation, so that's why I'm going to do it right. Well, if you they didn't I mean? have any regulations, there'd be no incentive whatsoever to do it right. No, there would be that, an incentive. If they knew there were no inspectors, no one was going to check their stuff and make sure that their stuff was up to code. Listen, man, I was in no. construction my whole life. My dad was an architect. Yeah. I've been in construction since I was a little kid. You fucking need regulations. These guys, a lot of people that are in construction, they're, they'll do whatever the fuck they can to make money. And it's not good for the people that have the house because they might have that house for five, ten years before that problem manifests itself. The, the people who are establishing these codes are licensed builders or people that have been involved in construction for a long fucking time and they know what's safe and what's not safe. That's why those codes exist. It exists to protect the consumers. You can't just protect the consumers through the marketplace because so it I'm not takes calling a long for time for these problems to become a real issue and these problems could potentially damage everybody in the neighborhood. It's not just going to affect the person on this one lot. Like if a fire starts, it burns all the houses in the neighborhood or if a flood happens and it floods everyone downhill, it's it's a real problem. Like Absolutely. You have to be real careful with construction. I get it. And, uh, you know, my dad wasn't in construction, so I'm not privy to, like, all of that, the little stuff. But I genuinely believe that as a general level, people have a vested interest in, especially now because of phones and apps and Yelp and all the mm -hmm. things, doing good work because that's how you will get more work. It, I you, agree. You're never going to remove the people who will do shoddy, shitty, malicious Shit. But you can keep them at bay with regulation. But what is like, what's the solution if someone pollutes? If you're not going to have regulation, what is the solution if someone does something that's illegal? Well, if you're not going to have a regulation, it wouldn't be illegal. But your question is. Well, it's illegal to dump things into the river, right? I mean, it's just illegal. Right, so if, That's not a matter of regulation. I mean, polluting, will, willful poisoning of rivers. I'm sure is actually terrorism. Right. It, it would be a bunch of like. So uh, what those guys would argue is what I said before, which is that ultimately, especially now because of technology, like in the old days. So like every time someone cuts regulation, I've heard Bill Maher say this a lot. They're going to start polluting the river immediately. That implies that these businessmen, whatever they're, you know, whether, whatever they whatever industry that they're in, that they're immediately going to be like, ha, the regulation's gone, start polluting the water. We live in a time now where everyone's walking around with an iPhone, where maybe 50 years ago, you could have got away with a lot of bad shit, right? Mm -hmm. Coal miners that were breathing all kinds of horrible shit that nobody was ever going to find out about, where now everybody is walking around with Snapchat and Instagram and blah, blah, blah. So a lot of the stuff would be exposed more so so that all of the things that we've been talking about for the last couple hours about, about people getting involved, a lot of the things I think would start self-regulating. But again, and then I won't say it again, I'm not for just deregulating everything. I just think there's probably better ways to do it than just having the government come in and say, this is what you got to do and now figure it out. Because the government isn't that good at most things. I like how the entire time 
he's arguing for deregulation. And then when Joe Rogan's like, listen, that makes absolutely no sense, and here's why, he pivots to, no, I'm now not calling for getting rid of all these regulations. And then he proceeds to continue to make the argument to get rid of all regulations. So he's trying to have it both ways. He's trying to give himself the wiggle room to say, okay, if this is coming across really stupid, then I don't, I don't mean it literally. Uh, but at the same time, I'm going to go ahead and make these arguments where the conclusion of the points I'm making, it's let's not have regulations. So it's just, it's really slimy. And those are, there are a lot of bad points there. So uh, let's go through it. The idea that, oh, iPhones or Yelp will somehow be sufficient in making sure that corporations don't cut corners. I mean, that's, that's almost so silly as to not merit comment. I mean, do we have to go through the thousands of examples of, yes, even the media, which is, it's a lot more than just an iPhone video going viral, right? Like the mainstream media apparatus going, oh shit, look at what happened with GE polluting uh, the Hudson River. And even that, that's not enough to get them to do the right thing. You need the government to step in and say, listen, if you don't do the right thing, then there's going to be a giant uh, penalty here. So, and, and that's the point is Dave Rubin it acts like a guy who's 14 years old who just read uh, his first Ayn Rand book and like instantly ag agreed with all of it and thought like, oh, this is brilliant. I never heard of this before. I guess greed might be good. And, dude, you're a grown-ass man. You're not 14 years old anymore. Listen, I'll, I'll be totally upfront with you guys. When I was in my early teens, yeah, I read some Ayn Rand books, and I, I was somewhat convinced by them, and I was like, oh, shit, this is interesting. I never thought of it in this way. But then you grow out of that phase when you realize that the overwhelming weight of the empirical evidence is in the opposite direction. See, that's the thing. Libertarians and anarcho-capitalists... They have the, all these theories like, well, if this, uh, if this happens, then this is the way that people will react in the marketplace. But it turns out that the evidence is the exact opposite. It's, so it's not true if you get rid of the regulations, eh, everything basically self-regulates and it works out. It is just objectively, empirically false when you look at the actual data and, you, and when you look at the historical record. So let me give some examples. Glass-Steagall. This is a perfect example. Now, that was repealed by Bill Clinton. What did Glass-Steagall do? Glass-Steagall was a, a separation of commercial banking and investment banking by law. So it's a regulation that effectively said this. When you go to the bank and you put your money in the bank, you have an expectation that, okay, I'm giving it to this well-known institution, you know, whatever, J.P. Morgan Chase, you, you name it. And... There's this understanding, there's this implicit agreement of, I'm going to put my money in this bank, and it's safe there. It's safe there. And the reason you, th you assumed, hey, it's going to be safe, is because there were rules in place that said, uh, commercial banks cannot take your money and do casino capitalist bets with it that are really, really high-risk bets. And anybody who's a gambler will tell you, if you make these high-risk bets long enough, of course they're going to explode and blow up and you're going to lose all your fucking money. So they were doing puts and calls and all these insane financial uh, tricks and derivatives bets and things of that nature with your money when you just go to the, your local bank and put your money in there. Well, guess what? That's a recipe for an economic uh, meltdown. So we had this regulation in place, this rule in place, where they said, no, if... You do, if you put your money in, the, in your local bank, they have to, by law, do safe investments with that. They can't do the really high-risk casino capitalist investments because that'll blow up. See, what happens, Dave, is that people, uh, especially at these financial institutions, they always work for their short-term benefit and uh, making a lot of money quickly as opposed to doing safe investments and maybe making a little bit of money over an extended period of time. See, that's the thing. It's not that the guys on Wall Street are the smartest guys in the room. They're the greediest guys in the room. And the evidence of that is what happened with the subprime mortgage crisis. 
and, and the Great Recession. And he also floats later on in this clip like, oh, well, can't we just privatize some of the uh, regulations? So here's a good example of uh, something along those lines. We had ratings agencies um, that, you know, you've heard of the ratings agencies before. There's a few of them. And weird, it turned out that they were rating these subprime mortgage packages AAA. Now, how could that happen? How could that happen that they're rating these subprime mortgage packages AAA when it turns out they were utter dog shit and they led to a, a financial implosion? Well, you have a giant conflict of interest when the companies that hold those toxic subprime mortgage packages are paying the ratings agencies to give them the rating. When Wall Street firms paid ratings agencies, they just said whatever the Wall Street firms wanted them to say. So if you make it a private company, far from being a cure-all, it's the exact opposite. It's the exact opposite. What happens is there's a giant conflict of interest, and they're all in on the game, and they're all trying to make money in the short run and damn the long-term consequences because it, it's not going to affect me. See, what they did with these uh, subprime mortgage packages is they played hot potato. So they're ranked AAA, even though that's bullshit. One company takes them in, and they go, oh shit, these are actually... This is bullshit. And then they sell it off to another company, and then they sell it off to another company. On the books, everybody's making a tremendous amount of money, but really, these uh, mortgages are going to implode because people are not going to be able to pay to pay them. They're going to default on their loans very quickly as soon as the adjustable rate kicks in. So the only way to address that is through government regulation. The only way to address GE polluting the water because they saved money if they polluted the river... They saved money to dispose of the toxic waste in a legitimate way. Costs a lot of fucking money, and they're not going to cut into their fucking profit margin willingly. They're not going to do that. Because who cares? It's just a river. It's not going to affect me. It's going to affect whoever's down, you know, down there. The FDA. Take the FDA, for example. So, there are far fewer instances of pharmaceutical drugs not working. Why? Because they are FDA regulated and they have to go through extensive uh, testing and verification. Now, on the flip side, there are countless examples of supplements. Like you go to you go to Vitamin Shop, for example. A lot of the shit there, probably way more than half of the shit there, is just bullshit. It just doesn't work. Uh, it doesn't work in the sense that there's no evidence for the products in the first place. But on top of that, a lot of the times they have these capsules that are just filled with, like, soy powder, but they say a whole bunch of other stuff on the label. So how the fuck can they get away with selling a product that isn't even what it says on the label? Because they're not FDA regulated. If they were FDA regulated, the FDA could look at it and say, oh, this is uh, bullshit and you're selling snake oil, so now um, you have to sell the right thing or we're going to stop you from selling anything. That's the way that this stuff works. <laughs> I mean, the idea that we have to make a case to, you know, have a, a police officer on the beat, which is what this is, effectively, and the counter-argument is like, no, it'll all work itself out. What the fuck are you talking about? There was a scandal where, because of a lack of regulation, people were selling uh, rat meat and saying it was chicken. Well, what's the, what's the only way to fix that? To have government regulators go, oh shit, you're lying. Now, Dave Rubin might counter-argue, yeah, but then eventually people will learn it's rat meat and then they'll tell them, hey, don't go to that vendor because they'll, you know, they, they suck and they're selling rat meat and saying it's chicken. But Dave, how many people have to fucking eat the rat before you get to that point? A lot of people are going to have to eat the rat now, aren't they? One of the reasons we know, as a matter of fact that regulation works is there was a massive period of deregulation uh, on the lead up to the Great Depression. Now, during the Great Depression, one of the things that happened was uh, FDR put into place massive regulations of Wall Street to try to prevent another economic crash. And then we had decades of sustained growth. And the next big downturn we had was after the neoliberal period when they brought back the deregulation. Because 
when you have deregulation and tax cuts for the rich, what you have are what's called boom-bust cycles. So the economy takes off and explodes, and then uh, it all implodes and the bubble bursts. And it doesn't take a genius to see that, that we're in a bubble in 2007. It doesn't take a genius to see that we're in a bubble today in 2018. And uh, a lot of this has to do with massive Wall Street deregulation. So you need refs. You need refs in the game to make sure that everything is fair and that everything is on the up and up. And when you get rid of the refs, it's not that everything gets better. It's that everything in the long run gets much, much worse.